When marketers feel like something's not working as well as they should, one of the next things that comes to their mind is to run a split test or A-B test. They're the same thing. Split test slash A-B testing is simply a method of conducting controlled randomized experiment in order to improve a particular metric. It could be website traffic, it could be conversion rate, it could be um, cost per acquisition, it could be bounce rate, it could, it could be anything. But the goal is to improve a particular metric by running controlled randomized set of experiments. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through the importance of running split tests and the five step process to running an effective split or A-B testing. Let's go. Hey guys, thank you so much for staying to watch this video. My name is PC Timmy and I create brand marketing inspirational lifestyle videos on this channel every single week. If this is your first time, thank you for being here. Make sure you don't leave here without subscribing. And if this is not your first time, then make sure that you like, comment. And if you haven't yet, turn on the bell notification button so you always know when I release a new video, which is every week. Like I said earlier, speed testing is simply conducting controlled randomized experiment. It's simply testing multiple variations of the same thing. It could be multi variations of a creative, it could be multi variations of a copy, it could be multi variations of your landing page, it could be different things, it could be multi multiple variations of your call to actions. But it always has a control, which is the original version that you're trying to test, versus one, two, or even three different variations with one thing change each time. Now, what are the patterns of running speed test? Um, the first one I can think about is gets rid of any uncertainty that you're in, in your marketing effort. If you feel like, oh, you have multiple ideas, then why not test it and actually see the one that, that actually works best? Um, it helps you to understand what your customer actually like to respond to for a fact. So you're not just assuming or thinking based on your research or what you know about them, but you're able to test multiple things and see the one that they actually really respond to. Um, when also running speed tests, you can get unexpected insights. It can teach you things that you had no idea you could learn. You could stumble on something that like, oh my God, I didn't believe that this was going to be it, but then this actually turned out to it. It could also, at the long run, improve your revenue as well as the overall performance of your product, service, landing page, etc., etc. There are lots of benefits to running a speed test. But in this video, I want to focus on the five-step process on running an effective speed test. actually run an A-B test, of course, you need to ask questions. You need to actually figure out what you want to learn. You need to, be, you need to have data that actually tells you this is what, how we're currently performing so that you can know, have a benchmark that you actually want to improve. If you're going to run, if you're going to run any experiment, if you're going to run any test, you must have some set of data that you're already measuring that serves as a benchmark that lets you know that, okay, this thing actually needs to be tested so I know what works or what not. So the first thing is gathering data, gathering your questions that you need insights from. Say, okay, I feel like this city is not working. And so based on how, why do I think it's not working? Because I've seen this data, this data, this data, and it tells me this. The first part is gathering your analysis, your data, and the question you want answered. So number two is hypothesis stage. It's simply designing set of theories, right? So you see this data, you've measured this data, and based on this data, you're able to come up with certain theories that sort of interpret that particular data or that can answer that particular question. So for instance, say I've been measuring for my site, the fact that our, my, my data has shown that our LTV versus CAC ratio is about 1.5, and ideal minimum is supposed to be three. So I want to run A-B tests to improve the LTV CAC ratio. Once I've done my analysis to get where we are right now, to understand where we are, oh, we're 1.5, the next thing is to create theories. Theories or hypothesis simply, why do I think that I'm getting 1.5 as against three or four, five and six? So I can say, oh, we're spending too much. Our cost per acquisition on search engine marketing, which is our major source of um, customer acquisition is too high. Or no, our landing page is not mobile responsive. So we get a lot of people clicking through, but then they are not, they are not able to actually convert on the landing page. Or the conversion process is, is too long. People have to like sign up, then they need to get an email, they need to get a phone call before they were now able to close a deal. 
or I could say, oh, I think that the CTA is not clear enough. So when people come to the landing page, they are not able to understand exactly what they need to do. All I'm doing at this stage is, is trying to figure out different theories, is trying to um, create different theories as to why my data or my analysis was showing me the results it was showing. When I'm able to come up with different theories based on the data I've seen, the third thing is to then design experiment that I think can help me answer or solve those theories. So for instance, my analysis says that, oh, our LTV CSC ratio is 1.5 and ideal minimum should be three. Um, my, some of my theories are one, on the landing page, um, there's no clear city on the landing page. Two, we're spending too much, our keywords are not um, optimized enough, so we're spending too much um, per cost per conversion on search engine marketing. Three, our landing page um, is not mobile responsive. Four, the conversion process is too long. Those are my theories. Now, I'm going to design an experiment that will solve those theories. So, for instance, number one, our city is not clear enough. Experiment number one, create two different landing pages with two different CTAs. One with what we currently have now, and one with something that we think is going to do a lot better, maybe shorter or maybe sharper or more creative. I can create two or three different variations of that. That's one experiment to answer one of those theories. I could say, okay, another issue that we think we're having is that our conversion process is too long. So we are going to have stage one, the funnel is going to remain how it is, four stages. Experiment two, we're going to cut down the conversion process for this set of people, and it's going to be just two-step conversion process. So you see, design is simply coming up with different experiments that can help you solve the problems that you brought up in your hypothesis stage in your theories. Talked about landing page, so let's let's actually implement it. Get it there, guys. Get the copywriters. Let's put this thing together, and then let's roll it out. Let's put, run our campaigns. Uh, we'll send some people to this landing page. We'll send another set of people to this landing page, and we'll compare results. You're integrating, so you can actually measure. That's step four. Step five is learning. After running your test for a few days or a few weeks based on whatever you guys decide, the next step is what did we learn? Were we actually correct that it was CTA or was it the conversion process or was it the keywords we were using for our search? Were they able to gather all our experiments, see all the tests, see all our learnings and then find the result or the combination that works perfectly? I think one of the key things you also want to remember in stage four integration is that you have to run one test at a time. So I have four theories, but I'm not going to run each theory at the same time because if I do, I might not be able to accurately measure what exact thing did I do that gave me this change. So instead, you break it down one by one. Run your CTA um, speed test, run your conversion funnel speed test, run your responsiveness speed test individually, and then compare results to find the combination that works perfectly. And then the next time you feel like something's not working well, go back to step one. Analysis, then create your theory, your theory then design experiment, then integrate, then learn, and then go back all the way. I hope you learned something from this video. Speed testing is definitely something that every good marketer, every good hacker needs to do as often as possible because you want to keep optimizing your campaigns and optimize your marketing activities. If you've speed test before, I'd love to hear your experience, any learnings that you've got here, any insight, please share with me. I want to learn from you too. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. I'll be here to answer. Don't leave this channel without subscribing. Thank you so much.